Welcome to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickabaugh, the Note Queen, where we talk about owner financing and notes. Financial solutions, one mom and pop to another. Welcome to the, what what month is this? This is July, the July version of uh, uh, our Virtual Coffee, anything about owner financing and notes. This is one of the, my favorite things I do. Thank you so much for being here with me and for listening afterwards. Um, uh, uh, you can find me over at notequeen.com, and as Axel was reminding me, um, on Monday, Axel, I'll get it to you this weekend, but on Monday, we're going to start blasting out uh, and uh, in full force to fill up our property and paper summit. I only do live trainings once a year, and this is it coming up in South Lake Tahoe. If you've never been to Lake Tahoe, it is gorgeous, and uh, besides it being a really great place to visit, um, this is the time where you'll get just really intimate one-on-one -on -one sort of um, rubbing shoulders with myself and a lot of the people that have influenced and mentored me over the last few years and really helped me come into what I say my own and uh, really prosper and grow and expand in a lot of different ways. So I'm just really pleased to bring my friends and my mentors um, to my hometown instead of me always flying everywhere going everywhere else um, you know I'm bringing them to me here on the west coast a lot of times I'm going to the midwest or the east coast but uh, or on a cruise to some Caribbean place <laughs> but anyway so please go visit propertyandpapersummit.com I think I have 35-ish seats left like I said it's super intimate and there's a lot of benefits besides just the education that happened in that sort of a setting. And last year was so, I was really stressed actually last year because I've never done a live event before, but it was just actually so magical for me and everybody else that I'm like, okay, going to do it again and hopefully make it a yearly thing. But, you know, none of us has a crystal ball. So while I'm doing it, <laughs> please join me um, if you can. So propertypapersummit.com. The uh, official emails are going to start blasting out through myself and my other partners um, probably Monday. So that being said, I had the pleasure of uh, this wonderful lady, Brenda, who's gonna be on with us here in a second. She scheduled some one-on-one -on -one time with me um, a few days ago, and it was just an absolute pleasure. And uh, we had a wonderful hour together, and I really wanted her to share her story here, as well as that we didn't finish up everything she wanted to talk about, plus her deal that she wants to review, I think would be perfect for everyone to sort of listen in on and, um, gain value from. So Brenda, um, are you here? On? Yeah. Brenda? Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Um, well, you just, uh, uh, it was just such a uplifting thing for me, even though you called to talk to me. I just, <laughs> I really get, I just really get a lot from the, the feedback and from people's stories. Just, you know, one person at a time, one, one mom and pop helping another just uh, make a change and make a difference in their, you know, our lives, our children's lives, and the, and the lives of the community in which we live. So with that, just go ahead and, and do a nutshell like you did for me, I guess, Tuesday we were on the phone together. Would you please just spend a minute or two just so people can understand, like, who's doing this note business kind of thing? How do they get there? And what, why are you doing? Or, you know, what inspires you? What, what motivates you? So please, please, Brenda. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, um, it it's, I like to say that real estate found me. And um, uh, 1984, 1984, I know that because I was, uh, I had my son and it was right before that, that I went um um, I was born and raised in the home, um, and so I got used to really just having a whole little town to myself, and then when I got pregnant, um, I went looking for a home, because I was living with my parents, actually, <laughs> and, um, and, and uh, I went to an apartment, because I thought, well, that's the only thing I could afford, and I tell you, I walked in, I went, oh, hell no. I thought there's just no way I could live yeah. and raise my child like this. Right. And um, I immediately was, I've got to buy a house. 
or, or at least a property with a yard. I wanted a yard for my child. Right. And so everyone around me was like, you can't do that. You can't do that. I'm 22 years old. Okay. And, um, but I was so determined. And so I found a trailer, my first trailer, $5,000 over here in Boulder. Actually, that trailer court still there. And it, interest rate at the time was 18%. And I remember thinking, I don't care what, 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 can, if I could afford that and I can have a yard, great. So I did. And um, even though me and my son's father, um, you know, it was me. It was all under, you know, I'm the one that got the loan. And he was just like, awesome, good for you, you know. And then, um, and then we only stayed there a year because it was um, roach infested. So it made us leave. And so I went looking again. And a year later, seriously, my situation hadn't changed. I got a job. I was making, I'm not kidding you, maybe $10 an hour. Right. Um, and and um, I just had this idea, like, I wonder if I just put this out to my friends, if they know maybe a relative or someone that would like to sell their home to me on a one-to-one -one basis. And so I did. And, um, and a friend of mine said, sure, I've got an aunt who owns several properties in, in Lafayette, Colorado. Um, and so perfect. It was the next city over. And I went and met with her and she was like, absolutely. We literally took out a piece of paper and she, we did an IOU. It was a trust system. And, uh, you know, today that's called, you know, a lease option or rent to own, right? I had no right. idea. All I know is that, believe me, it was a huge ass yard, excuse me. <laughs> and I'm like, that's perfect in a safe neighborhood. And so the agreement was for five years. And so it sold my trailer, gave her, I think it was $1,000 down. That's all I had. And, um, and it was 40000 So 40000 was what our agreement was, two bedroom, one bath. Um, and then... Um, so then I stayed there, paid it off within five years, um, and then after, uh, then, then raised my son there for another five, and then so was there for about 10 years. Um, and then this, now we're into, you know, uh, going into almost the 90s, and then um, I was ready to move on again. Um, this time I had, you know, I had a corporate job. I had, had gotten, you know, a little bit more income, a little bit more knowledge, um, and then um, talked to a uh, lender and said, I want a house, but I don't know, I, I think, is this what we could do? And she's like, you know what? Yeah, you could maybe refinance your the house in Lafayette, take some cash out, and then you could move to another home, which I did. Um, however, I couldn't sell, well, because I couldn't sell it. I was experiencing our, our, my first recession in the 90s. So I couldn't sell it. So it was literally like, oh, I have to become a landlord? Are you kidding me? So I had to, um, yeah. but quickly realized, uh, wow, this is not bad. You know, I just, all I did was turn it and looked for the current rental. I actually went to the library to did research. There was no Google at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I knew that it was just, you can rent it for the current market. And so I did, and I was cash flowing about $500 actually, because I didn't owe much on it. Right. Um, and then I did that for 10 years. And again, just because I, you know, by this time I'm a single mother. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then when I was in the Lafayette property, I had already broken up with my uh, son's father and he was already on his own. And believe me, when that happened, that income uh, to to pay my mortgage. I was so scared, but I was just like, well, I, I got to move forward, you know? So, right. um, so anyway, I did that, got qualified for the house because I was able to take some cash out. Um, and then I, um, sat on it for like another, uh, you know, five, seven years. Um, and then decided to, and then at this point it was like, okay, now I understand. Let's buy more property with it. And I want more of this cash flow. This is sure really nice. Um, so then I sold that house. Um, at the time I, I had paid it off and sold it at the time for 160,000 and then took that and then purchased the homes that I have today. Again, just sat on them. Um, so I've got my primary home in Louisville, which is a really nice area. Believe me, when I bought this house, I was on my way to Boulder, which was the place that everyone wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I couldn't afford it. And so I was like, oh, man, I have to live in Louisville. And if you know anything about this area, maybe you don't. But now it's like primo, primo um, right. Right. Um, you know, property. So, um, so then fast forward to today, um, or about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
So I've just been kind of sitting on them, just taking care of them. I even refinanced one to fix it. It had structural issues. My whole theory, because I was, um, then I had gotten uh, trained by um, Robbie Kiyosaki. That was my very first mentor back way back when. Uh -huh. And so it was all about got to hang on to the big, to the small properties. And then when you're ready, then you buy the big apartment. Um, and then, so then, um, but really just still surviving as a single, you know, just having that, actually having a single mother mentality is what I had. Right. And now that I'm learning that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so then my son, um, about three years ago, um, well, three and a half actually, uh, got pregnant with my grandson, which I was a pleasant surprise um, because uh, he had pretty much told me that he was not even thinking about having children, and so I didn't think I was going to be a grandmother. And then, um, and then once that baby came out, woo, woo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's just so sweet. Because under all this story, you know what's been driving you is just the life that you want for your kid. You want to be a good parent. You want to provide. And look, look at what you have done. Just going here's the vision I have for what I want for me and my boy. And now you got how many grandbabies? I got two. So, so then it just keeps expanding, right? So now you're like, Hey, the, you know, maybe the properties I have now are good for my son, but oh my gosh, you know, the people I love is just expanding and I want to do more. That's what I, I'm remembering from our combo. That's exactly what happened. It made me look at my properties. I was just sitting on them. I was fine. I was traveling. I was doing, it was just me. I'm single. I don't have a boyfriend. And so, um, look at um, what you've done though. Can you just step back and go, wow. Can you just step back and go, here's what a single mom's maybe making $10 <laughs> an hour at the beginning, buying your first house at 22. Can you just step back and go how amazing that is? And people say, you know, you just can't do it, or maybe she could do it because back then, now there's no opportunity. You know what? There's still people yes. <laughs> making things happen because they have a strong enough vision and persistence and like... Uh, it was know, a mindset. I, I like to use that word. It really is, Don. Yeah. And not a, not a short-term, hey, give me all my money now, delayed gratification and just... Yes dedication to go, man, I, I want to provide for all that love that I have for my family. And, and that's, what's just driven you. It sounds like to me. It, absolutely. Right. So now you, so let's, I want to quit, so we don't run out of time. Okay. I want to get to, uh, now tell me the story about you. You hooked up with some, uh, real estate education and yes, I did. You, you ran into Jeff Armstrong, who, who's been in the business since I was kicking the tires of the note business back in the mid nineties. Yep. So he's been around, he's solid solid guy. I have never personally heard him, you know, drop any BS yep. or any hype. He's a pretty solid guy. And he does a lot of edu uh, education and mentoring. Yes. So I think that's someone uh, that um, I'll just give him a plug without any hesitation right there. So um, yep. anyway, so you're, then you got going, well, what's the whole note thing? And so, then so, that, so that the deal that you're going to want to yeah, so the education came because I didn't know what to do with all, all this equity. I've got tons of equity. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I, I really just educated myself on all these different options. And, and then I made my goal three years ago. I'm cash flowing, you know, $3,000 now, and I want and I desire 10000 That mm -hmm. would make me happy a month. And so um, once I put that out there, and started educating myself, I, I just got exposed to all these different options. And it was just like, hmm, not sure, not sure, not sure. And I knew I was like something, because what I've noticed too as a real estate investor is that we all have a different ID, right? There, I mean, there's investors out there that love fix and flip. That's all they want to do. Mm -hmm. I did one, I did wholesales, I did that. And I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, do I really want to be doing that? Right. And if that's not cash flow. So, um, and then, uh, Jeff Armstrong came to do a presentation and I was just like, it was like no toilets, no, you know, termites, no tenants, you be the bank. And it was like a no brainer. I was just like, Oh my God. <laughs> like, yeah, and, the light of course. On. And, and it's so interesting that that's so far down, right? I mean, you do, you, there's a progression of understanding in the, in the industry. I, I don't, but like notes seems like it's this big, ah. Uh, you know, because we don't uh, normally, 
you know, we don't really get educated that normal people are the bank. We like the bank is the bank. Institutions are the bank, not the yep. people are the bank. And we don't understand the, uh, um, the power that, that can happen. So let's talk about, so then you're like, you got the in, introduction to Jeff and all of these ideas. Um, and so now you have a property. Let's talk about the property. Let's get Great. A, a real live deal and just hammer it out right here. All right, great. Well, just so you know, I had to do a lot of uh, uh, these properties I've had for a long time, so it was a really emotional thing I had to get over. Yeah. So I get over it, and I had to totally look at it as a business. That's why I, I had to talk to you. I mean, I found you, and I thought I just loved you. I, I love everything about you. And so I was like, I didn't care how much you're consulting. I was like, let's do it. I want to hear her feedback. And um, because then finally I got over the emotion and went, all right, this is the property. This is perfect opportunity. So it's a three bedroom, two bath, um, um, valued at 350. I owe 180. And right now I'm getting, um, um, I, I, uh, my mortgage is 1200 on that. And, um, and then what else do you need to know? Yeah, so I'm. I was just reaching for a pen because my whole office is ripped to pieces. So I'm. I'm in the living room because I have no carpet and <laughs> everything's a disaster. So pardon me I'm reaching for a pen. So the property that the the fair market value you said is three fifty. Yes. And you owe one eighty. Yep. Uh, and what? Uh, can you just give me the terms real quick on it? Like, wh what are the terms? Like what the, is the interest rate and the interest rate? Um, I believe is about you know four point four and a half percent. Okay. Um, thirty year amortized. Was it a fixed thirty year fixed? Fixed. Oh, nice. Okay, sweet. And then um, and the month and is uh, are taxes and insurance impounded into your monthly payment? It is. Okay, and what is that number per month? Twelve hundred. And what will and and what what's the maturity date? How how much farther you got to go before you're out? Oh, of you know, but I refinanced this before I got educated that I shouldn't. <laughs> oh gosh! So so you have another thirty years to go. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, probably about like twenty eight, twenty seven. I think two thousand fifteen is when I did that. So basically, twenty seven years to go. And uh, what would this property rent for? Yeah, uh, what's fair market rent? Well, right now I'm renting it for nineteen hundred. Oh, nice. Okay, that's great. And are you managing it yourself? I am. And is nineteen high, low, or about right? It's about right. Okay, great, fantastic. So, um, excellent. Now, what is your goal? So now, what you're going? Hey, I'm going to take this property of the. You told me you have a handful of properties or something and you're going to go, I want to try, I'm going to yep. put on the hat of trying to be the lender. And for, and when people ask me um, or anybody that's been in the business, they go, Oh, how do you get in the business? I want to be in the note business. And I go, you know, the low hanging fruit is yeah. just sell a property that you already own and carry the paper. Voila, you're in the note business. Or if you have capital sitting, lend it to somebody else. Voila, you're kind of, you're kind of in the loan business, but you know, loans and owner carrybacks and buying discounted paper, it's all secured by a note and a deed of trust or a note and a mortgage, right? So, yeah. or, or a contract for deed in some parts of the country. But yes, um, you're in the note business if you are not a landlord and receiving cash flow um, that's secured by real estate. So, so, uh, so, so like, not only did Jeff say that, yeah. I heard it the first time, that would yeah. maybe go through the emotion. And then I heard right. you say and it, like, and I oh, went, oh. My, like, it, it, they become your babies, right? Yes. Well, the grandchildren <laughs> came along. These were your babies, right? Yeah. Right? So yes. it is. It's very emotional. But the beautiful thing is when you carry paper on it, that same property, you're not, like, divested. Right. You're still very much involved in this property, but just wearing a different hat. Exactly. Allowing someone else. Like, you had a really, you don't even know. What an awesome deal you had, a thousand dollars down or whatever. You know what I mean? You didn't even know. You're just like, oh, I want to own. Uh -huh. You know, you had the guts to go for that and say, I don't like this apartment living. I want to own. And then you just manifested that opportunity. Now yeah. you can you can help somebody else. You can profit 
try on a new way of investing, yes. get your feet wet and offer that opportunity to somebody else. Maybe you're not going to take a thousand dollars down. We already talked about that, but <laughs> you know, just saying stuff happens out there where, where a lot of times people get zero down, 0% financing. I mean, that is not unheard of, especially when people, um, they trust you, you have relationship equity mm -hmm. or capital or character equity, something like that. Um, obviously you were a good bet, even though you had a, a less than traditional down payment. You, I don't even know if you had a credit score at that point, who knows, right? Know. Exactly. But the point is you manifested that opportunity and you've just yep. leveraged and kept going and that's fantastic. So you're going to do something good for you, for your, your kids and your grandkids and yep. give someone else an opportunity who is worthy and capable to own a home without having to qualify for bank financing. Isn't this awesome? Like, yes. It's like, what, like I keep saying my little tagline one, <laughs> you know, creating financial solutions, just one mom and pop to another. So that's right. What do you want? So let's, let's crunch around this deal. It's worth three fifty. Uh, and, uh, did you get that by appraisal or? Yeah, I, um, I looked into selling it. Well, you know, in my quest to, uh, figure out what to do with this property, I had to, of course, look at the value, and this has already been, I mean, it gets probably more what's going on here in Colorado. And it's in Boulder. It's in Broomfield County, which is next to Boulder. Okay. So I'm guessing I haven't even looked, uh, but it's probably, it's probably higher. But I just thought, let's just stay at three, 350. So yes, this was back probably November. November. Okay. Well, in, in my opinion, then if, you know what, it's, it's really okay. You, what did you buy it for originally? Uh, 150. Okay. Are you doing okay on this property? I'm doing amazing. Okay. You're doing okay on this property, right? You have 200,000 in equity that you have already sort of realized and you have more yet to realize, right? That's right. So, um, so you can afford, it's, it's better. See what you want, right? Is you want long-term cash flow from this property. I mean, of course, you're not going to lock into someone. They can refinance or sell the property if they want to, right? Right. But really, your vision is to just put on a different hat from landlord to lender. Yes. And, uh, get that passive income, but you don't want a headache. I mean, That's the right. whole point of going from land landlording to lending is not not to have headaches. So how do you avoid that? You're underwriting. You know, uh, banks have underwriting departments. If you're, going, if you're a mom and pop owner carry type person, you have to be your own underwriting or hire someone like me or Jeff or something like that to say, how do you create a note that's worth holding or selling, right? So now, and it's okay. So what you want to do is obviously we've talked about this. You want the biggest down payment that they can afford, right? Like yep. 20, there's a reason that 20% down is conventional lending because at that point, the statistical likelihood of default is much, much lower. Right. You want them to be able to afford it. So uh, if someone can, obviously people are paying $1,900 a month. So it, it sounds to me like maybe they could pay a hundred or 200 more and uh, for, for the tax breaks that they'll get from ownership. Right. Yep. Um, and all of that. So uh you know, with your 1200 PITI and that it's fixed, you, you can leverage. So you're going to basically do a wrap is what we're right. talking about. You, it, it's cleaner. Most people like it better in their minds. Sorry about that. Uh, when, um, when it's free and clear, cause then you don't have to worry about it, but it's very common to do a, a AITD all inclusive trust deed or all inclusive mortgage. So that mortgage, that bank loan staying in place. So that's already there. That's really in first position. And you're going to be wrapping with a larger loan that includes this loan, right? So right. the new person's going to pay you. And I, I know you know this, but I'm just explaining. To no, you. no, no, that's great. Right. Yeah. So, yes. so they'll pay you a bigger payment and then you pay the, out of that and you'll probably have a servicer. Yeah, I would highly suggest you have a, a, yes. a neutral third party loan servicer licensed. Uh, and, and then they, so they pay the PITI to the bank and, um, and then they pay you the remainder. So that way the borrower knows, the new buyer knows that you're not going to, you know, take the money and default on the loan. And then you, you know, everything is just tidy that way. And so the only risk that you have is that, you know, there could be, um, 
technically the bank would have the right to accelerate if they found out about our transfer title. Uh, so there is a remote possibility that they, you know, if they, if interest rates went up, I think, I think the pressures, uh, I know they're planning interest rate hikes, but I think Trump's administration is trying to keep them back down so we don't ruin the economic um, uh, energy momentum that has been started. But if interest rates are re really high, they might get busy and start calling accelerating, right? With They have the right with the due on clause to accelerate if there's a transfer of title. Um, there are ways to get around some of that and minimize that, um, but that's the kind of inside sort of talk you'd have to come to the, <laughs> the summit to hear. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, this is very valid. It's maybe a 1% or 2% likelihood that that loan could get called. And in the meantime, let's talk about it. So um, we talked about doing 20%. So I'm going to get out my trusty little calculator. And <coughs> if you do not, if you do not have this app that, uh, some version. I love this one by in it in a day development uh, HP 10 B 2 Anyway, I just love this right so yep. look so we're just gonna do this. So um, Let's just make it up if so So I, I keep getting lost but what I want to go back to and, and we need to wrap this up in about five minutes uh, But <laughs> I'm talking super fast <laughs> So um, uh, so it's okay if you leave a little equity because then not only do they put a big down payment down and have decent credit, right? Mm -hmm. And have the ability to pay. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, ideally, I mean, with your first one and only one in a year, I'm not, I'm not saying I understand what Colorado's done with Dodd-Frank, even though it may be sort of going away. Um, you have to think about, it's not a bad idea to have a licensed uh, mortgage originator underwrite the file and prove ability to pay. So, so you can go, Hey, I set this up. I, I wasn't, you know, if you're in front of a judge and foreclosing on someone, you want to be able to prove that you made every effort to make sure that you're not being a, a predatory type lender. You set them up for success. You, you okay. never want to be in that position, right? Right. That, that that you're setting them up with, with something that they can't do. But if you're willing to ride out long, you've got 30 years, 27, 28 years to go on your loan. Yep. You're, you can easily, you know, ride that for that many years potentially. Right. Okay. So, so, but you can't write the loan. You can't write your note uh, longer than what you're, but well, you have a fully amortizing loan, so it doesn't really matter. But really you, you have to, you can, you can't generally in most cases give, better terms or uh, longer terms than you have. Like if you had a 10 year balloon, then you better write a 10 year balloon into the next person. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but you're, you're good here. So let's, and, and you want them to go the minute they take, so they, so if they put 20% down, what are we talking? What is that? If it's 350, if they're going to pay 350, you put it on Craigslist or uh, you know, for sale by owner Zillow is very effective in my part of town. So for sale by owner Zillow um, was helped me sell a couple of properties really quick, although I do love realtors in, in most instances. So anyway, so that's $70,000. So if they're going to put down $70,000, that, so that, that's the skin in the game, right? So, and also the idea that if they've got a little bit of equity, maybe the market value would come up at 380 and if they're getting at 350 that's that's so much the more emotional attachment that they have mm -hmm. to it. the feeling mm -hmm. that even if life gets hard you know not only do they have uh, um, the hard cash equity that came out of their pockets that they hopefully worked very hard for mm -hmm. but then they've got this equity that you left on the table because you could mm -hmm. so it's actually even though when you're offering terms it is true that you can often get a premium and charge a little bit more, right? But yeah. it's not a bad idea when you can. Yeah. To to just you see what I mean? Like, yeah. When people are like, "Yeah, I got a great deal," and they're they're even more uh, attached to it. And if you don't want a headache as a lender, and you yeah. haven't done the deal hoping that they're gonna you're gonna get it back and they crash and burn, then you want them 
just to send the payments on time. You just want that ACH'd into your account and you don't want to have to worry. So that's right. (laughs) Right. So it's okay to leave equity when you can. Right. Okay. Very great. So basically we got 350 minus 70,000, which is 20% down. That would be ideal. Now I don't know if you'll get it. You may get less, a little less. You may get a little more and that's great too. Right. Right. So basically, we've got uh, then at, that leaves a 280 loan amount, and you have four and a half. Let's. What do you think? Someone who is willing and able to put seventy thousand dollars down. What do you think? And if they have decent credit, let's just be real. They probably could qualify for bank financing, and I don't know what the rates are. But what do you think they'd be willing to pay? Now, sometimes you get self-employed people who have a really hard time getting a bank loan, even though they're really good payers. So let's just think about that self-employed couple, yep. that, you know, is a couple years out from even potentially qualifying for bank financing or something. Yeah. So let's just think about those people. But what do you think they'd be willing to pay? I don't know. Okay. I'll just, um, you know, okay. Well, I don't, 9%. That's going to be pretty high, I bet. So if we write that out at a normal, actually they could probably afford it. Now whether they can afford it probably because that's twenty two fifty, but I don't know if they would pay it. So someone in that price point. So uh, in that. Well, okay, price point, I'm considering what you just advised is maybe you know if the house is really maybe valued at three eighty, but then I give them at three fifty. That's right. Um, but I just am gonna say someone who has 20% down and pretty decent credit. Right. Okay. Um, you may, so here's what I want to do. You ask for what you want, right? You never know until you ask, right? Cause when it's a mom and pop deal, it's whatever the parties agree to. I'm going to guess that's a little bit stiff. Now, so then 8%. Well, yeah. I mean, let's at 8%, you know, there's a $2,000, but that doesn't include taxes and insurance for them. Right, that's mm-hmm. just uh, P and I. My guess is you can do really well. Let's say you're at four and a half percent fixed. Uh-huh. Look, you're gonna do great, even if it's at five and a half, six percent. Okay. So you you it's just about what people okay will agree to. All right. Right. So yeah. so basically. Um, you know, then that brings, if, if that's at five, let's just put in six, you know, because look, Hey, I'm doing you a favor. But then if you really want the long-term cash flow, they're going to pay you off as soon as they can or refinance as soon as you can. And if you really are wanting just to practice and feel that, that spread, you know, if you put in 6%, they're almost 1700 bucks plus taxes and insurance, whatever that turns out to be. So you still kind of have that same spread as you do as a landlord, uh, but just way less headache, right? And, and less risk if we're talking about a conventional. And I, and I have a nice $70,000 to reinvest. Exactly, exactly. And you are gonna have some capital gains uh, to deal with, right? Because that 70,000 and you have quite a, a large capital gain if you're from 150 up to 350. So whatever cash you do get, as a down payment will probably be subject to uh, capital gains, you know, whatever principal you receive, but, but so what, so what, so you have to pay whatever it is. And then you have, let's say you get 50, 50, 60,000 that you can do something else with, you know, and maybe, you, Oh, now I'm a note holder. Now I wonder if I'll, I want to make a loan to someone else and be a private lender, or now maybe I'll look for a small owner carry note to buy at a discount. Right. Cause right. I already did this thing. So um, even if you got paid off in a year, you did a new thing and you added a new skill set to, you know, your closet and you, you created a solution for a buyer and a homeowner. And that's, that's never a bad thing. Right. Okay. So you actually can't lose. You've, you've done really well for yourself, no matter which way it plays. Does that make sense? Yes. Or did I, okay. Anything left on, on, on talked about before we wrap up here in the next. No, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, well, good. And I'm sure you can just crunch things around with Jeff too. Yes. You'll see what, <laughs> yeah. You know, 
send me an email afterwards when you actually do do it. Just tell me how the story worked out. Oh, Please. sure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Brenda. Uh, your, your story is very, um, very inspirational on so many levels. And I just know you're going to be successful because, because you already, you already are. <laughs> you're just going to, you're just going to expand the ways that you can achieve the goals that you have to, to make a great life for yourself and for your family that you're, you're blessed to have that you didn't even know you're going to have. Right. So. Thank you, Don. I look forward to, I'm really going to try to make it uh, really truly to your summit. It would be lovely. It'd be lovely if you could. It's just such a gift to meet people in person. And uh, yeah. So okay. We'll, we'll Thank it. you. Thank you, Brenda. Okay. Um, and another thing, just before we go to the next person, um, and Ed, is Ed still on? Ed's still here. Okay. Hold on there, Ed. I'm going to bring you on a second. Um, um, you know, one thing that I was reminded from our, my chat with Brenda, um, is that is that noise in the background really loud to you guys? Like the uh, the tape being cut upstairs? Axel, is that super loud? Uh, no, I don't hear anything. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it's really loud. I'm going, whoa. We, we run two home offices out of our house, so we always have a lot going on. But anyhow, um, you know, our, our chat just reminded me, you know, going big picture when people say, I want to invest, what should I do? And the, one of the first things that I do is just say, you know, I, I'm kind of a prepper. I'm not a doom and gloomer by any, any stretch, but just, I, it's just in my DNA to be a prepper. And in my, my mom and my grandparents, we always created refuge for ourselves and potentially a lot of other people. So um, I like to diversify quite a bit. And the first thing I think people should do is y you better invest in, you know, some food storage, some water, some you know, whatever you would need to survive for two, three, four weeks if you had to, if all the things that we're used to are just offline. It's just a good idea. I, I mean, even if there's a windstorm or a, a rainstorm, I mean, anything could happen, right? And so I, I really strongly believe in having some cash and having, like I said, food, water, guns, ammo, medications, um, you know, all the basics. Uh, and then um, when you have that, then um, I also like diversifying in, in um, some precious metals, gold and silver, some that's not in my possession and some that is in my possession. Um, and even crypto got a little position in crypto because I really, I really think that we're at a time that's unprecedented and it's, there's a possibility that some things could happen that aren't just a repeat exact repeat of previous cycles. Things could actually change pretty dramatically and not knowing what that will be and how big of a, uh, adjustment period there could be. I like having a lot of different things you know I, I don't just do one thing now obviously I'm heavily invested in notes but really notes secured by real estate things that have real value and since and um, so I've got some properties and, and in those it's like hey my one of my first things is I love it here where I live in Carson City Nevada which is in the Reno Tahoe area and it's not even remotely close to Las Vegas I hate Las Vegas, actually. <laughs> it's just not my kind of town. But, um, you know, I, I can cr I'm creating refuge. So the properties that I've picked up for buy and hold in the last 18 months, I'm using them as short-term rentals, partly because right now that they're very productive and profitable as short-term rentals, but also there are several, a handful of properties that are fully furnished. And at a moment's notice, if there was ever any big event uh, that disrupted things, I could, I could assimilate um, a lot of people in a short order into fully furnished operating homes so I can create refuge. I hope I don't have to have it. I'm really not hoping for that, but it's just in my DNA, so I'm doing it. So I create refuge. Uh, on the second tier, I, I'm, it's a great cash flow. And on the third level, this by no means the lowest. I'm having fun. I really, really love this dance between property and paper and creating different ways of doing cash flow. So just a little insight in my little soapbox thing. 
that uh, Brenda reminded me of when we were talking earlier this week. So back to the note business. Ed, can you, can we un unmute Ed, Axel? Because Ed is helping me. Now, when you go into the note business, sometimes things don't go <laughs> as planned, right, Ed? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, and so, Ed, uh, you've been doing private lending uh, for a while over in the uh, Baltimore, Maryland yes. area, and uh, then because of some deals that went bad, then uh, you had to take a couple properties back and get them sold or dealt with on some level, right? Yep. I became a rehabber. You became a rehabber because <laughs> you had to take back the property. So. You just have to know that when you're not you're not at a Disneyland ride. I mean, even if you do everything right by the book and by the guidelines, you know, life happens, right? So anyway, I had one of these, and it so happens that I had made a loan to a guy I don't know a couple of years ago, and um, so I'm just at the point where next week is the trustee sales, and I'll get the property back and because I'm on the West Coast and the property's on the East Coast, it's really wonderful to have financial friends and people that can help be your boots on the ground, right? So I, uh, Ed has been on my calls a couple of times, enjoyed his, his contributions, and I just kept his phone number. So I just called you out of the blue, what, yesterday or the day before and said, hi, Ed. <laughs> By chance, can you drive by that property for me? Because I need to figure out what my opening bid's going to be. I really do not want this property back. I mean, even if I have to leave money on the table, I don't want to rehab over there. So what did you find out? What did you find out? Were you able to go by this morning? Yes, I drove by this morning. And I also, as we discussed the comps that my uh, realtor friend provided mm -hmm. i studied them last night and picked a half a dozen comps and i drove by them too oh so, thank you wow you really went above and beyond i really appreciate that well you provide a wonderful service with the uh, oh, virtual wow. coffee that you do and i think it's good if we can participate and help out too <laughs> thank you so much okay so wow. let's uh, this is un, i don't think you're going to be happy with i have what i have to say but okay. um uh your property is, is near a lot of boarded up properties. Oh, great. Okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and they, some are pretty close, like in the back of your property. And, mm -hmm. and you know, within a mile uh, south, it's a uh, commercial area, uh, kind of a, known as a high crime area. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, boarded up properties and run down properties. Uh -huh. Baltimore is kind of a block by block city gotcha. and really trips up a lot of out of town uh, investors. Uh, so you're, you're in kind of a mid-level neighborhood uh -huh. there. Gotcha. Uh, now the top of the market is a, I'm going to, a 298,500 mm -hmm. top of the line, staged, rehabbed, finished gotcha. basement, central AC, balcony and deck. Uh, 80 days on the market and okay. six beds, four baths. Okay. And that's the absolute top of the market in that area. It's the best house on that block. Gotcha. One of the best. Gotcha. So your hope to get 300,000, I think is a big reach. Um, oh yeah. I, you know, and let me just back up and this is one of the pitfalls of, I mean, there's many, many, uh, benefits for doing, uh, deals, no deals all over the country, but you are relying on BPOs or appraisals from people. And sometimes they're not accurate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, so I'm just saying that even if you do your due diligence and you get your BPOs and your appraisals, um, there's, there's more, I would say there's a dozen times where I've going, I go, where did you get, the, you know, by the time you get it back, it's worth a lot less. Either they were misrepresented, they didn't know what they were doing, or, you know, they were influenced at some point. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, the next nice property right. listed for 165, sold for 150,000. It's a okay. much smaller property, a little over a thousand square feet, three bed, okay. two bath. And okay. that's a beautiful rehab based on the listing. It was staged central AC, unfinished basement, and on-street parking in a tight parking area. Gotcha. So that's a smaller property than yours because you've, you've got uh, two, 
I'm sorry for the pause here. You've got uh, 2,100 2, square feet above basement level. So okay. this is a much smaller property, but it's, it was beautiful. You know, right. the listing was, was great. Right. And it's in a nicer neighborhood, gotcha. um, more uniform neighborhood than yours. Now, we had a very peculiar situation in that you have an incomplete rehab, and there were two incomplete rehabs in the comp group. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, so one of them has uh, 1,700 square feet, three bed, three baths, three uh -huh. and a half baths. Uh, that sold for 130,000 in July, uh, July 19th. Okay. Um, it's on recent. 33 days on the market, street parking, central AC, and it's overgrown as your yard is overgrown also. So that 130 is a possibility for you as um, as a uh, auction price okay, okay. wow that's actually um, well that's really happy I'm very happy to yeah hear. that's better than I expected actually so. well we're I'm working my way down the list okay Sorry. So I'll be patient I'll be patient <laughs> but you everyone just gets to see this real life thing this is not staged this is me going you know once in a while you get a crapper in your uh, portfolio right, right. So here we go Okay, so the next one is a, another incomplete rehab, central okay. air, street parking, 129 days on the market, 24 days on the multiple list, uh -huh. unfinished basement, and one side, it's on a corner, one of the sides is a pretty busy street. That is under contract with a list of 90, uh, and it's yeah. almost as large as yours. It's uh, almost just under 2,000 square feet above ground, above the basement, Okay. That's a six-bedroom, three-bath house. Okay. okay. Then uh, we've got a uh, sold-in-May property, which is uh, one block north of you. Uh -huh. Same street. Uh, yeah. It was vacant at the time, not rehabbed, no AC, one day on the market with dual agency, so that was a pocket listing. Right. And that is eight bedrooms, three baths, Sold in May for 120000 and it's larger than yours by about 300 gotcha. square feet. And I did see someone sitting on the porch this morning, so it doesn't look like that's being rehabbed. The, um, the one that just, you mean that one? The one that sold for 120 in May? Yeah, it sold for 120 a block and a half north of you. And mm -hmm. uh, it, from, from May till now, I mean, if they did a complete rehab locally that, and resold it, that would be too fast. Right, right, right. So I think whoever bought that is living there. That's my guess. Um, then my last one is the mm -hmm. most discouraging, and that is a property that was uh, originally listed for 100000 It's boarded up. It was on the market for 88 days, and the uh, has radiator heat, no AC parking, street parking, boarded up, and the four-bedroom, uh, one bath about the living space of yours, and they gradually lowered their price until they sold it at thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand. Yeah. Well, that is such a diverse. I mean, <laughs> from thirty thousand to two hundred and ninety-eight is yeah, the with all within a very. Uh, I mean, if you were if you felt like spending the day, you could walk to between all of them. You know. That is just crazy. Now, so, Ed, if you were me, what would you do? Well, give me a moment, okay? So, I also looked at your property, and I couldn't really compare because I don't know that much about it. But right. just looking at the size of it, I'm guessing it's a five-bedroom. It might be four or it might be six. Right. Um, you know, you've got 2,100 square feet above ground. Uh, I looked in the front windows. Uh, it is definitely an incomplete rehab. There's sacks yeah. of something, maybe drywall mud or something, right. uh, and demos junk all over the, the front window. Uh, the back door had been locked up, so I couldn't peek in there, and there were no other windows that were uh, at ground level. So uh, to answer your, your question, yeah. uh, I, did, I had to take a property for, to foreclosure, mm -hmm. and what you – what the lawyer explained to me and what we did is you guess at what the market value is. Right. Okay. And then you open the bid at about half of that because if that's what it sells for and you end up taking it back at that half, 
the, the judge has to approve that the auction price was reasonable and half of market value is considered reasonable in the legal system. Okay. Okay. So you yeah, might want. Um, yeah. So I just want to compare notes, right? As you're bringing that up. Cause when I, I had a little chat with the, uh, the guy who, who's running the, the law firm that's handling this foreclosure. And he said, you know, and this, this was just, and I want to, want to come back to see if, if this matches what you said or you heard anything else. He said, look, um, the assessed value of your property. So in the assessor's tax rule, it's, it says 148.9. And he said, um, the people at the trustee sales are buying, they, they get excited at about 70% uh, of assessed value. So a 30% discount from assessed value. And that would be something like 104,000. It does now. That's only 30% off, and you're saying 50% off. So somewhere between that number, depending on the neighborhood and the condition of the property, right? Sounds like it's about right, like a 30 to 50% or 70, 50 to 70% of either ARV or assessed value. So comment on that, if you will, please, because you've done a couple in your neighborhood. In well, neighborhood. let's comment on how Baltimore treats assessed values. Yeah. Um, they, um, Baltimore likes to keep its credit rating up to keep its uh, interest payments down. Okay. And so I, I discovered in doing some tax sale research that after the sales were over, I thought I could go, you know, look at the list of things that hadn't sold. Then you can just walk in over the counter and pay the taxes. You don't have to bid for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I looked at, at some of these and they, they were just, there were outrageous uh, tax assessments for the value of the property. It might be a $150,000, uh, you know, tax bill on a boarded up block, you know. Uh, property on a boarded up block. And, and so the, the city is not adjusting their tax assessments for reality because they want to show that number on the books for their credit rating. So you can't really trust what an unoccupied property's uh, assessed, tax assessed value exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of times at least, well, I guess it really depends. And thank you for, for that insight. A lot of times assess, assessed value is, is far lower than market value. Right. In this case, you're saying a lot of times it's way higher than market value. Yeah. Than market value. So now you're, you're, I want to make another comment about your property that I overlooked before. And that is yeah. unlike the other properties, except for the one on your block, all the other properties are in uniform single family blocks, but mm -hmm. your property is across the street from row homes. Now they're in pretty good condition. There aren't any mm -hmm. board ups there and they seem to be well cared for, uh -huh. but across the alley, there's an alley behind your property. And mm -hmm. on the other side of that, there's a, a group of row homes and several of them that you can see from your backyard are boarded up. Okay. So that's a negative that these other comps don't have. Right. Okay, so you know what you you can pick a reserve number. You know you yeah. can have a starting price. It doesn't have to be a, uh, a an absolute auction. Mm -hmm. You can pick a reserve number and start lower. Mm -hmm. That and so just for example, the property that I took back from my loan. Yeah, uh, I started the the bidding at uh, forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and it ended up going for, I think, $85,000. Okay, I, wow. I took it back Whoa. because it was, it was uh, less than what I wanted to just let it go for. Got So, so it bid up to eighty five, and but you still ended up with well, it? I, I had to buy it at eighty five. Oh, I just was moving money from one pocket to the other. Oh, I see. I see. Gotcha. Um, all right. So this is – Amazing. I can't thank you enough, Ed. This You're welcome. Really phenomenal, you know, really helpful for me in this situation and hopefully very helpful for other people listening now and in the future. Um, the real, the real kind of stuff, you know, the, the little mud you get on your boots when you're, you know, going around in your little red galoshes, you know, thinking, right. oh, being a lender is so sexy. Well, sometimes. Well, what, you know, you asked what I would do and I would start the auction low. Yeah. And have a reserve. 
start low. Like, I'm just going to just pretend like this is, this is, uh, you know, you're like, what, what do you think would actually get it to, to move and be interested, you know, from an investor standpoint in that neighborhood? I mean, to me, the best case scenario is uh, between, uh, God, like around 100,000. Seems to me like. Well, let's that. see. Since you're asking that question, I guess yeah. if I thought of ahead, I would have. Uh, all right. So let's I know, say. I'm putting you on the spot. And, that's and all right. There's no problem. <laughs> I think the, your, your, a superlative rehab in that neighborhood would draw $195,000. So if it was. Now, if I put in the money to just fix it up and do it upright, you think my ARV the would be one ninety five? Top for that block would be one ninety five, and one seventy five is probably what a buyer is going to think gotcha. to, to be safe. All right, then at a you know thirty five percent margin, uh, the uh, that leaves us at uh, one hundred and thirteen thousand seven fifty minus rehab costs, which I can hardly estimate just looking in the front door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but let's say 50. Mm -hmm. Oops. So I'm at 63,750. That's what I would hope for if I put this on auction and I would start lower than that. So you would be hoping to get 63,750. I think that's a, yeah. a reasonable amount uh -huh. if, if my if my numbers are right now the available properties are very scarce and so it might get bid up beyond that or you know i have to think about it because like as much as i really don't want it um maybe i mean at some point it'll just make sense for me to wait a little bit longer and put the 50 grand into it just to you know not take depending on how big of a you know haircut you know i really want to take right so uh because you know if if i'll just take it back and it i was you know like you gotta wait 60 days even like even if i was the winning bidder or had the bid amount nobody else wanted to pay i mean it's going to take 60 days plus for me to even get on title and to be able to start but anyway if i put the 50 in then i could uh you know if you think 175 is kind of a realistic number, I could, you know, just I was telling Brenda before, I maybe could get a little more if I'm willing to carry, but then, then I want to go, I would need a pretty big down payment not to have the same thing happen again, where I have to foreclose again, you know, on the same property. So um, really a lot to chew over. That, that gives me at least something real. And, and that's what's the biggest problem in the note business when you're buying stuff that's not in your backyard, which is most of the note business it's not in your backyard, unless you're a private lender and you just lend in your own community. Uh, but because there's a lot more lending opportunities than discounted note opportunities generally in any one city or locale. But um, it, it's getting accurate numbers. And then like, you know, like people say, I, I want to go, how did you give me this appraisal? How did it appraise for this? You know, like I get one appraisal when, when I'm doing the deal. And then by the time, you know, I, I've got an REO, a real estate owned property that I've taken, somehow it's significantly lower. And I'm like, gosh, so it's, you can't, you can't, the due diligence and getting accurate data is so important. So Ed, you have just done a great service and so much so that because I'm the note queen, I'm going to have to knight you as a, <laughs> a knight of the queendom and job Thank well you. done, my good and faithful servant. Well, let, let me ask you to send me the, um, the information of the auctioneer uh -huh. and the time and day of the auction. And, uh, you know, I might show up if I can clear my schedule and just see what oh, happens. Wow. Okay. I'll make a note to myself. Send Ed the time date and place of and who the auctioneer is so i can get the uh you know what they require the auctioneer okay i will right. thank you so much ed my pleasure i really appreciate it and i hope all of you that are listening uh appreciated that little tutorial and um you know just like with brenda for me like my whole path into you know after i quit my job my nursing job 
it's been very organic and there was no there was no bullet train to the queendom i'm telling you there was no no queen university there was so basically i've just learned one lesson at a time by willing to just step out take risk you know uh, work towards going towards a vision that i have right so i'm always learning i'm always learning you know so you you got 10 deals and one of them gives you a headache well that's just part of it. That's part of my education. You're going to pay for your education one way or another. And uh, so anyway, Ed did me a great service. I, and I hope you learned from it. And, I, and if you want to just, you know, hang around with people that have been around the block and can give you a little insight and maybe save you some, some of the more expensive headaches, <laughs> education uh, seminars that you'll, you'll get if you're willing to take risk and get in motion and just go. Uh, please consider coming to the summit, like again, propertypapersummit.com, um, or, or get some training somewhere. There, uh, if you sign up as a free account um, on the Note Queen site, I have a links to resources place that where I will create links to a lot of the great um, other vendors and and educators out there that that will be good, you know, at least a starting place for you. So. Anyway, thank you so much for the time. I always feel blessed that you take an hour out of your day to spend it here. And uh, just remember to use your powers for good and go out there and create financial solutions just from one mom and pop to another. Thanks again. I will catch you next month. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Virtual Coffee with Don Rickabaugh. For more, please visit notequeen.com.